going to learn about how I is able to produce a focused image. Okay, before I begin, I'm going to do a quick recap on the structure of I. And the ones that are more important for today's understanding. We look at the I, starting from outside in. Okay, starting from outside, that thick white layer, that's the sclera. The layer inside, you see, see, choroid, that's where all the pigments are, the blood vessels, uh, the layer on the inside, that's even R, retina. That's where you find all your photoreceptors, the thing that detects light. Next, uh, also today, we're going to focus on the retina. On top of that, we're going to look at the lens. The lens is the second part of the eyeball that really focuses light. Where is the first point at which light gets bent? So there are actually two points at the eyeball where light bends. Okay? The conjunctiva? Not really. That was just a very thin, thin layer that doesn't make that much of a difference. Okay, then you visualize. Light comes in, the first thing you pass through, a very thick, transparent layer, uh, the cornea. So at the cornea is when light first bends. Light will then pass through this next transparent structure called the lens. It is at the lens where our eyeball fine tunes the light being bent so that you can focus the image very sharply onto your retina. So, the aim of today, we're going to find out how our lens is able to do that fine adjustment to focus images sharply onto our retina. I imagine after this lesson, a lot of questions will arise as to why and what we were expects, right? For many of us, uh, a lot of you here were expects. Try to find someone that doesn't. Christine, like, for real? <coughs> Are you in context? Okay. You are blessed. Mia, do you? <coughs> context? But you can see me. Okay. So most of us here are spectacles. Not up. Not safe. Just a legal very dry. Okay. So the aim of today, we're gonna to find out how light is able to get focused um, and adjusted so that it can land on a, on our retina in a very focused way. To appreciate how our eyeball is able to control our lens, we need to look at a few structures. The first, the lens. Okay, the lens over here. This is a cross section of the lens. If I look from this perspective, you see that it's just half the lens. <clears throat> On top of that, the lens is attached to these string like structures, and they are called suspensory ligament because they suspend the lens right in the middle and the suspensory ligament one end is attached to the lens the other end is attached to this muscle and that muscle is called the such as you can see ciliary so, so some of you may call it ciliary body some ciliary muscle both are fine okay I think it comes with one L but I always spell it with L okay so it's one L huh? okay these three structures very important Help us understand how our eye is able to adjust the lens so that we can create a focus image on the lens or on the retina. To appreciate how our eye uh, adjusts and focuses images, we need to first go and understand a little bit about physics. Okay? But, but not very complicated, so I also don't know much. So it's in a very simple way. Um, today we're going to focus a lot on how light bends. And when we talk about light bending, the word is refraction. Okay? Light bends. And the chin way, computer way of saying it is refraction. There are a few things we're going to look at today. Uh, in this setup, there are 12. Uh, I hope it works in class. First few things I'd like to feature are the lenses I have here. Here are two lenses. Okay? Both look round from the front perspective, 
by by turn them sideways, they find that their curvature is different, thickness is different. Yeah. Notice that for my more my thicker lens, there is more curve. My thinner lens, less curve. See? Yeah. I'm going to use another word now. When we talk about curvature, we can now use the word uh, convex. How bent or how curved the lenses are. In other words, this lens, oh, I'm not sure this lens. This lens is more convex. It's thicker and more convex. This lens is thinner and less convex. So you can use the vocabulary this way. More or less convex. Okay? In other words, how curved. Is the one that's more convex, more curved. The lens behind is 
the one that's less convex, less curved. I'm going to now show you the one that's the one behind, the less convex one. Ready? But, okay, ready? Uh? Less convex, huh? Okay. Is it parallel? Can you let me know if it's parallel? Can you log? Not really, it's parallel, huh? Okay, I'm going to shine it through. What happens? Do you see it bad? Do you see it converge to a point? Can you see, huh? Now I'm going to shift this to parallel light in, into the more convex lens. What happens? What's the difference? More convex lens, less convex lens. Can you see a difference? Yeah. Can you see the converging point? It's closer now, right? Okay, I'm going to introduce some terminologies to you. The point where the light beams converge that's called a focal point. Can okay, I not complicate that? It's where the light focuses to a point, the focal point. Notice that the more convex the lens is, the focal point is closer to the lens. The less convex the light is, the focal point is further away from the lens. Yeah? So those are two terms I'd like to introduce to you. Hey, why are you being so smoky? Yeah? I think the smoke is not quite stopping. I'm going to put this outside in a while so that you all don't start to cough. Okay? Um, but I would like you to appreciate the value of that because that plays into why we may need our lens to be of different curvatures. If we need to focus images onto the retina, we can adjust the thickness and curvature of the lens. Right? That's the only way our eyeball is able to adjust how close the focal point is going to be. Let's say if I need to focus my image closer in front, I will need a lens that is more convex. If I want to focus it somewhere further back, I'll need a lens that's less convex. Yeah? Okay, so one last time before I put this upside. So, this is about parallel. Okay, so less convex lens. Oh, now it's getting too dark, huh? Oh, yeah, now I'm not see already. Okay, but just now you saw, huh? So now it's too much really. I'm going to bring it outside before I start coughing also. So I'm allergic to this kind of dust. Okay? So then it's one. The first experiment I'd like to show you to help us appreciate curvature. What can we do? 
we just tug on it on the edges. If I want it to be more correct, then I loosen my grip so that it's thicker. That's how our eye is able to control the thickness. Not by swapping out the answers, but just by how tight I'm pulling at the edges. The more taut it is, the more the less it curves, right? The less convex the lens. The less taut, the more convex the lens becomes. How might we control how much we are pulling on the edges? Has to do with the muscle surrounding it. Okay, so this is the part that we need to appreciate a little bit more. We recall yesterday when I brought up muscles. Muscles, when they relax, they lengthen. When they contract, they shorten. Supposing now, if I want my lens to be thicker, more convex, all I have to do really is to allow my ciliary muscles to contract. When I contract my ciliary muscles, what am I doing? I allow the strings that are attached to the lens to loosen up. If I want my lens to be pulled at the edges a little bit more, I want the suspensory ligaments to be very tight, what I can do is to allow the ciliary muscles to relax and open up the circle. And by opening up the circle, it will pull more on the edges of the lens. It's a little bit counter to what you might imagine. Okay? So I think let that sink in for, for a while. For your lens to become more convex, we need the ciliary muscles to contract so that whatever is tugging on the lenses don't tug on it that much. Okay, so you let it sink in for a while. Can I appreciate how the mechanism works? This is your ciliary muscle. Assuming that it is currently in its contracted state, it looks like that. If this same set of muscles relax, you expect that this circle will open up. Can I appreciate? Yeah? When the ciliary muscles relax, if I write the circle will open up. Kind of like your circular muscles of the iris. When the ciliary muscles contract, it should be no, the hole in the middle should be smaller. Yes? Is this what happens when we spin? Oh no, when we spin, what you are more doing is that you are limiting the amount of light going to your eye. When you limit the amount of light going to your eye, actually now you are focused, you are allowing only certain lights of certain angles to enter your eye, then your, your ciliary muscles do less work to, to adjust uh, and bend the light. Because the light coming in, you are already filtering certain angles off. Okay, so can appreciate that. Huh? Next layer. All of these ciliary muscles are attached to suspensory ligaments. An interesting thing is, when it is fully relaxed and pulling outwards, you'll find that the suspensory ligament is very, very hot. That's the word where you think hot. I think this is how we spell it. Hot. Okay, that's what the suspensory ligaments are in this case. If it contracts, the ciliary muscles, the suspensory ligaments, will become very loose, or we can use the word slacken. Mind you, these are just ligaments. They are not muscle. Okay, these two fellas are not muscle. It is a misconception. A lot of us think it's muscle and they can do something. So it's just straight. Final layer. I now include the lens. If 
my ciliary muscles is tugging at the edges and the uh, suspensory ligament is very taut, you expect the lens to be pulled to the edges also. From the side view, from the side view, the lens will be thinner and less convex. This case, when the ciliary muscles contract, suspensory ligament is slackened, you'll find that the lens looks smaller from the front view. From the side view, that same lens now will be more convex and thicker. It is just like what I was doing just now in my hand, hugging at the edges or not hugging at the edges. I draw the suspensory ligament. Here, the suspensory ligament is very loose, it's second. Like Here, it's very tight. It's really like you no know, rubber band being stretched from the side perspective. If the circle over here is bigger, you expect that the suspensory ligament is more tight. If the circle is smaller, you expect that the suspensory ligament is going to be looser. Yeah. Now we just park one lens in the middle and it parks at the areas of the lens. I confuse you. Now why learn about all this? When might we want to use a lens that is more convex, thicker? When might we want to use a lens that is thinner and less convex? If you can, you can pull out this simulation and we can uh, have a look at how all this comes to play. You can find this simulation inside the headlights. I found this simulation very nice because it shows you when you might want to use different kind thickness of lens depending on whether you're looking at something far away or close to you. If you'd like to follow me, may I get you to start off first by adjusting it this way. First, you can, this is what you probably see. Can you bring the slide the bar over here to far? You want to start off with far away images. Okay, so there are two button, buttons. One is focus, one is object position. For focus, you are adjusting the thickness of the lens. Object position, you are shifting how far the image may be. Let's start off first with the far position. The object is far away, so I'm playing this particular bar below. Okay, object can be close or far, close or far, close or far, we saw far. And I'd like you to look at the lens. The lens, you can either make it thick or thick. Thick or thick. Perhaps you can 
play the two uh, bars right now. Adjust. Shift the position of the object far to near, far to near, and the thickness of the lens far to near. I'd like you to see which lens is more suitable for using if you want to look at things far away or close to you. Okay, and I'll play with this. I think by now you have 
and locate something. If the object is far away, okay, maybe look to the screen, I'll summarize. Uh, for those that don't understand. Okay, look to the screen. My object can either be far away or close to you, far away or close to you. If it's far away, notice that the light rays that eventually reach your eyeball, they almost look quite parallel to each other. Yeah? Versus, if an object that is very close to your eye, you find that the light rays are almost like diverging from each other. In other words, if something that is very close to you, the light rays are diverging, I actually need a lens that has more bending power so that I can bend it to focus it onto my retina. I say again, if light rays are diverging as they enter, my lens needs to be more powerful, more convex, to be able to bend light more so that it can focus itself onto the retina. And this is what you see. I need a thicker lens. Notice as the lens gets thicker and thicker, the light bends more and eventually focuses onto the retina. Conversely, if I have an object that's very far away, and the light rays that are coming in are almost parallel, actually I don't need to bend the light that much anymore to focus it on the retina. Instead, I can work with a lens that is thinner. So what as the lens gets, lens gets thinner, light bends less, the focal point is much further away, but far away such that just lines landing on the retina. And this goes on a continuum. As you bring something closer and closer and closer to you, your lens is getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. So you bring it further and further and further away, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. I thought of a way to remember when you need to describe whether the ciliary muscle is contracting or relaxing. Okay, in this state, the muscles contract up. And it's relaxing is when the lens is thin. So now you think for yourself, uh, which one do you feel eyes straight for? When you look at things very close to you, or do you really look at things far away from you? When do you feel like strain in your eyeballs? How far? I mean, have you used your eye? Okay, when I say strain, or means after you like look at something very up close, right? Your eyeballs start to be very tense, you know? Yeah? Okay, because there's some, there's some science behind it. When you're looking at something very up close, you are using one more set of muscles, you know? You are getting your ciliary muscles to contract for a prolonged period of time just to make your lens stick to do it something close. But it's actually more relaxing to do it something far away, yeah? In fact, I would dare back to say that if right now you try to bring something uh, sentence up close to your face and you stay for long enough, you'll feel really tired. Right? Because you are using your ciliary muscles in its contracted state so that the lens is thicker, so that you can see something up close. And that's really tiring. But no one really feels tired if you just look at something far away from you. In fact, sometimes I'll, in my most relaxed state, right? Have you ever experienced this before? You stare at the teacher, then you are so relaxed until you just look past the teacher and the teacher becomes blur. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah? Just because you're not even thinking anymore. You're not even trying to look at the teacher anymore. Just look at them. Like now I'm looking at color, but if I don't want to look at color anymore and I just go into that trance state of like, I don't care about this anymore. Right? I go into such a relaxed state that I'm looking past color, color goes out of focus. Right? That is when your scenery muscles is in its most relaxed, the lens is most thin, and you are your focal point right now is very, very long and very far away, is everything is out of focus. Okay? Can I appreciate how our lens is able to adjust the thickness and the uh, the how far it goes objects are. Yes? Correct, but the ligaments are not muscles. They are just like uh, strings. So there is no, you cannot tire strings out. Yeah? The only thing you can tire, tire means tire, to be tired, are the muscles, not these strings. Strings are just an attachment. Another example of a ligament you learned from last year when your heart beats up, do you remember that there was that? Oh, sorry, I forgot what it's called, the thing that prevents the back floor, you know, the, the door from flipping the other way. Yeah, okay, so there's valves, right, but then there were strings attached to prevent them from flipping. Cordae tendinae, thank you, whoever said that. Cordae tendinae. Yeah, they're just strings. You cannot tire those strings out. 
Yeah, so they are really just things to connect one part to another.
you will not be able to perceive an image in your brain. Okay, uh, I think usually people who are blind has to do with damage to the retina, more so than the lens. I've also heard people who do sports, especially ball sports, or sports where it involves like punching, you know, to the face, that's boxing, uh, fighting, that, you know, sometimes they punch so hard, right, until the retinal layer detaches from the coral layer. If it detaches, right, it means to say all your photoreceptor layer suddenly detach from the sensory neuron that's connected to it, you know. So people can go blind if you go give them one two punch in the eyeball. Not teaching you how, but telling you not to because it can cause someone to go blind. There are many, many, many other conditions that can affect your sight. Uh, I do not know the full spread. Uh, but with your basic knowledge and fund uh, basic understanding, I think it's enough for you to go and read up more. You will see all these terms constantly pop up. They help you, I think you can Google a little bit more about why some people have this, some people have that. For example, color blindness. Is it related to what we learned today? Uh, or is it not? Yes. When the eyeball is there, it's like default. Are the sensory ligaments like connected or default? Oh. I think that it is default when you are relaxed. Okay. That depends on what default is. Uh, I like to think that your default, you are not trying your best to focus on something close to you. So I think in your most relaxed state, you're not forced to get something close to you. Most of the time you're looking far away, and your ciliary muscles are relaxed, and your suspensory ligaments are caught. So I think most of the time your suspensory your ligaments are caught. How about like when you're asleep? That's a great question. I, I guess, you know, yeah, I mean, if your, if your eyes are closed, you're not particularly focusing on anything, Okay, it still makes sense for this to be relaxed state. Yeah. You all may be thinking for this poor thing or constantly talk. Uh, I don't know what's the effect long term wise. Maybe as someone goes older, the suspensory ligaments, I really don't know what's happening. Uh, but now that you mention it, uh, if most of the time our suspensory ligament is hot, maybe over time uh, it may affect whether it can be as hot to pull the legs anymore. Maybe that's why as people go older, their vision also get worse. I'm not very sure but it could be a biological Yes? Oh, when you focus on something close to you, why the things behind get to learn? Because now your brain is more focused, and okay, your brain is more interested at this point in time on focusing the light rays that are bouncing off the thing close to you. There are still things bouncing from far away, but is the part, the things that are coming from far away, the lens cannot focus those light rays that are coming from far away. Yeah? Because if you are using a thick lens now, it can help focus light rays that are bouncing off close to you, that are divergent. Those things that are still coming in parallel from far away, now this lens is not suitable. That's why it's blurred. Yeah? Temperature? How the eye works? Yeah, so for yourself, yeah, I'm going to use the yeah, way I talk to me. For yourself, uh, you just need to appreciate the two aspects of how our eye works. Number one, you need to know how our eye is able to produce a focused image. And number two, yesterday, about how we um, adjust the amount of light entering the eye. It's not that our eye doesn't have any more function, but these two are very important. It helps you appreciate life a little bit more. Every time you're looking at something close, far away, you are using the knowledge from here. Every time you sit in a dark room or a very bright place, you, you now know why. So that's why we learn these two things, because they're very relatable. They are things you use all the time. So it's right. So like the angle at which the light enters your eye, Something different, is it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm okay. 
That brings me to another question, something I have. Why come in China, laser beam direct for eye? Right? So, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if instead, let's say we shine. Well, because technically, right, if you have light rays that are focused into your eye, you know, I think your first reaction is to look away. Because when something is focusing onto directly into your eye, I think the amount of energy concentrated to the point immediately when it enters your eye will be quite high. You may end up looking away. Right? I don't know, I don't have an answer to that. If we shine light differently, I'm not sure even if this plays into optical illusions. Yeah? Uh, a lot of optical illusions, I'm not sure if it has to do with the way light enters our eye. Could be, you know? Yes? Oh, sorry. Then come back to you.